Well, welcome to Pilates Rounds um, this week. So we had come up with the theme for this week as diagonals in the body. And um, it's one of my favorite topics and one that I feel like I have a lot to learn in still because I think there's so much about the diagonals in the front of the body and the back of the body and how that all connects and how it can relate across the body. So that's why I like it so much. Plus, I feel like people, students in Pilates don't really understand what the diagonals do or how to even activate them. So I've been working really hard on p with people to try and help them to understand that, to find balance across the body. So that is why this theme came up for me. Um, but I wanted to see if you guys had any specific questions before we start or, um, or not, and then I can get started and show you some of the things I've been teaching in incorporating the diagonals in the body, some of the cheat ways I've been trying to get people into those diagonals. So any questions before we start specifically? Seems, can you guys hear me? I don't know if they can hear me. Yeah. It seems a big topic in a way. Diagonal so back, front. Um, I mean, the main exercise that I use to try to get the diagonals is, is swimming. I swim prep mm -hmm. particu in particular or swimming itself. But other than that, I mean, other than point to dog, that, that kind of stuff. Right. So that's right on track. Yeah. So we have... Uh, I think about the body as a whole series of diagonals. And, and so there are, if we want to divide the body down the frontal plane so that we are looking at just the forward part of the body, we could be talking about, or the back part of the body I'll start with because that's what Kim's actually talking about. So things where you're doing swimming, full swimming, right? That's going to activate the back or the posterior chain in that posterior diagonal. And then... Things where, so that would be swimming, full swimming, and that would be pointed dog with the opposite arm and leg going. That would be the back diagonal, the back body line. Then we could also have the front body line. So that is actually like dead bugs where you're doing opposite arm and leg. Um, that is obliques, like the upper ab curl, or I'm sorry, crisscross. Those are all addressing that front diagonal. And so if we simplify it, we can talk about just those the, in, in a single plane, right? We can talk about the diagonals in a single plane. If we want to complicate it, there's a lot of wrapping and spiraling too. And so that, that I don't take my clients into that because that's a lot of thinking to do, especially when you're just trying to, to deliver a class. But it is something to sort of ponder uh, on your own or maybe take apart little pieces of, and I can share the little pieces that I do work on my, with my clients on for, for those, but they are gonna be a little bit uh, less, um, less forward or less easy for the clients to understand. But something that you guys could work on thinking about and working with. Um, I just so, have one question. Okay, if I can yeah. Hi. Um, I was thinking about, um, I don't know if this would be a diagonal because this is where I get confused. And, you know, it's not one that we even really do that much since we just had that whole talk yesterday about the single leg circles. When the leg is over to the side, you know, you can really think about using the oblique to bring the leg up. But I didn't know if that was necessarily... A diagonal but I was thinking that's I've heard that before and that was a way for me to just feel like I had more strength in that pose mm hmm yeah okay so let's I, I like your comment I'm gonna take it apart yeah. so let's think about we were talking yesterday for those of you who weren't in the rehab class we were talking we're talking about hip and the question keeps coming up about hip range of motion and, and what's a good way to get people to have hip range of motion and how do you counter that with enough stability while you're trying to get range of motion, especially on the mat. And so we came up with, you know, hip circles, single leg circles on the mat. We talked about it on the roller, um, on the springboard. So single leg circles 
in itself is just a rotational motion of the head of the femur. Hope, hopefully, it is just a rotational motion of the head of the femur in its socket. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about hip circles. But in order to, what Allegra is referring to is, if we were to open a leg out to the side and then bring it back in, is that a diagonal somewhere else? And so, yes, in a way, if it, because you do have to stabilize for it and you're stabilizing across the body, right? So my, if, if my right leg, for example, is out to the side, in order to bring it back, I need to be stabilizing with those left, left muscles and left stabilizers, left, left pelvis more than right pelvis for stability, right? So that's what, that, that is something that does happen. So we jumped to a more complicated version of a diagonal already by, with that question. So here's, here's my thought process around it. I, I, I like to simplify things in my mind. So I go back to what is the direction of the muscle fibers? So what, what direction do your obliques go? Do you guys remember? So we have two layers, right? So yeah, you're right. So internal obliques, your fingers in your pockets. External obliques are going to be the opposite. And if you remember um, ipsilateral, so when you're going to the same side, internal is ipsilateral, so same side rotation. So internal obliques, if I rotate right, are the ones that are concentrically contracting. So if I, and then the ones on the left are going to be the lengthening, and it will be the external obliques on the opposite side, right? So if I rotate left, it's my left internal obliques and my right external obliques that are doing most of the work, okay? So because their fibers are crossed. So they can be stabilizers when working together. In the case of the leg coming back, that would be, if it's my right leg going out, it would be my left <laughs> internal obliques and right external obliques working, right, more for that stability. Yeah, okay. So you can always check me on those. I get my rights and lefts all mixed up all the time. But that's the idea. So. But in a bigger picture, if you think about lines of muscle pull, so let's start up higher. If we go to, we can go all the way to the neck, right? The diagonal sternocleidomastoid, right? Big, huge muscle here is, is, is a diagonal coming in. The, and the back of that are those rectus capiti oblique muscles, right? R little tiny uh, oblique muscles that go right into the top of the head from the top of the cervical spine. So those are key for cervical extension, right, and, and positioning. And then we have also um, the longest coli in the front, which I think has a little bit of a diagonal as well, but sternocleidomastoid is more the diagonal in the neck. Then we come into our trunk in the front. If we're talking about front side, we have external internal obliques in diagonals we also have intercostals muscles in diagonals internal and external intercostals we don't talk about them much because they're tiny short muscles and really they're guiding the rib cage to stay in place but this is all diagonal other than rectus on top which is straight so we wouldn't really think about rectus in the diagonal sphere then the other big incredible muscle that we want to think about are the lats right so lats are um, anterior shoulder under my arm and coming down to my pelvis. And the fibers are not straight up and down. Those would be your erector spinae muscles, right? They are in a bit of a diagonal and, and going all the way to the arm. So that's why this arm out is um, a big, like arm out, leg out, works in that diagonal pattern, right? Because the angle of the fibers are in those diagonals. And then the, lumbo, the, the lumbosacral fascia or the thoracolumbar fascia, that's all diagonal into the top of the pelvis. I don't think I see any straight fibers, like vertical, maybe a few, but really those fibers are really more diagonal in that fascia too. And we can take that falling down into the leg. I think sticking to the trunk today would probably be prudent. But you could take that into the leg and thinking about like sartorius is a diagonal muscle 
to, to joint muscle, right? Hip to knee. Psoas is not a straight muscle. It ends up coming into the lesser trochanter, not in a straight line to the front of the hip, where people seem to imagine it to be. Um, even um, iliacus is diagonal across the pelvis, right? And then we have um, multifidi all in the spine, which are all diagonal, going a few vertebra up, like three or so levels up above, all the way diagonal. And then we have like deep, those deep spinal stabilizers, which are um, the spinous interspinalis, or the interspinalis are straight, but the, um, I'm sorry, I'm skipping the spine to um, <laughs> facet. Oh. <laughs> but what are they called? They're diagonal. All the little stabilizers are diagonal. Sorry, my brain's not working right now. But they're all little diagonal muscles. So you have one from spinous process to the, facet or to the arm transverse process transversal spinalis thank you came to me transversal spinalis muscles that are diagonal also deeper multifidi we we think more of as those diagonal stabilizers yeah so it's multifidi and multifidi don't get don't forget we sort of talk about multifidi more in the lower spine but they continue the whole length of the spine so don't think that they aren't there. They really are there all the way up. So we have the multifidi. So those are really the big diagonals that we have in the body. Uh, in the foot, we have diagonal. I don't know if you guys remember the um, little muscles in the feet have an oblique muscle as well um, and for the big toe. So there's some crossing in the foot too to give you more stability across the foot. So anyway, all that to say, if you're not sure if a muscle can be supported in a diagonal, think about the fiber direction. And if you do a little quick anatomy review, even just looking at the big muscles and, and just look at the fiber directions, that'll start to refresh your mind on what the diagonals can be and aren't, uh, can be and cannot be. So, um, so when we're talking about diagonals, those are the muscles we're after. And we're after that connection from one side to the other. So if we break it down to super simple, one of our, I think at this studio, one of the most common things we do are dead bugs on the roller. And I actually like to spend some time there working on uh, those diagonals because it also gives people a sense when they're off balance, right? And that's, I think, a key to understanding how to find control when you're using an opposition. And if you think about it, what is the one thing we do that's in opposition and we all do it constantly? Walking. Walking, right? So if you don't have stability in your diagonal, you're gonna be off balance when you're walking. And that's, you know, that's really relevant for small children and it's very relevant for older adults. So uh, that's one reason to really um, force the issue of working through those diagonals. So let's maybe, um, unless you guys have questions, does anybody want to pipe in anything? Okay, then maybe grab a roller. I, I'll grab this one here, oh, there's two. Uh, and let's just play with the diagonals a little bit. Here, uh, I would say supine first, and this is all stuff you guys know, so um, nothing crazy to report but maybe just with a little bit different mind around it. And then I'd love to know what other fun things you guys can think of. But typically I have people start here to do a little warm up, and then we typically just go to the arm reaching back, right? That would be super basic, right? Is just being able to even take both arms up and take one arm back. Then progressing to that one leg up and one arm down potentially and going out and in or both arms up but really that reach across the body here is what we're focused on for that diagonal so connecting the rib and and the language that I tend to use here is um, I like to think of a strip of duct tape that would go in this case because my left arm is up it would be my left rib cage to my right hip duct tape those together as I extend holding there to keep myself steady so, and then we tend to do both arms back. So that actually makes you forget a little bit about the diagonal, but you could put your hand on the rib cage and feel 
it work for you as the opposite arm and leg go. Right, really challenging that there. And then you could progress that to straight leg, right, up and then lowering in with a straight leg. So that could also help you really find that diagonal. Sorry, Kim. So reaching long through, and the lower you go, obviously, the more that challenge is. And then that same feeling of sort of this duct taping across or tightening the rib cage towards the hip as I go through that motion. Right, maybe try the other side so we're not uneven here. So starting with that one leg or arms down and just that one leg with that stability and then the one arm and the one leg. And, and then that same idea, again, same thing, rib cage to opposite hip as they go or as you go. And then straight leg, just bringing on a little bit more challenge there. Right, holding that. And making sure to feel connected across the body there. Right. Yeah. So that's one way in that long, long arm way or the long lever way to get to feel that working. The other would be to find your obliques on here. And I've moved a little bit away from the classic crisscross because I feel like people just don't get it and they end up rolling side to side. So I'll show you what they do wrong on the mat. But here on the roller, I've had people bring their hands behind their neck. And usually I'll warm up with a little bit of just an upper ab curl. But I, then I will go to that oblique and I like to take my hand across and really bring them up and then just go part way down. Because if they come all the way down, it feels like it's so much work to reconnect to that side. I find, um, so I keep them here and ask them to reach towards their knee and then back down, just running that hand up the side of the leg and back down to find that, again, rib cage across to hip. And being on the roller, it eliminates some of the problem. I, I just switched sides in case you wanted to switch sides. It really eliminates some of the problem of just rolling side to side, which is what I see a lot on the mat because they have to be balanced as well so you don't see them and this way they're just thinking about going up rather than thinking about the diagonal themselves which makes them want to rock side to side right so that's um one thing that i do to help the diagonal to do the diagonals on here the other thing that i've just started doing more and i realized uh, a lot of people i like it better on the arc and i'll show you on the arc um, but a lot of people don't have an arc at home. So if you're working with somebody at home, you can use the roller to do the same thing. It's just that they tend to have the roller slipping out from underneath them some, so they don't do as good of a job. But here, you could either sit against it, it with the roller behind the shoulder blades is where it would go if it was the roller. But with the arc, you can either have them sit on the floor in front of it, or you can have them sit in the lip of the arc and the hips here. So it's the same idea. The reason is that here, if I'm here, I'm a little more propped already, right? So if, my, if I'm already propped and sort of directed into the upper ab curl, I'm already activating my abdominals on both sides, right? So here you could then either ask for a little rotation and a rotation or that arm reach again or that arm reach you could alternate sides or stay on one side or you could even incorporate a leg extension to increase that work across the diagonal so obviously you can do this on the mat too but this propped up upper back uh really helps you want to it, the roller slides a bit, yeah. So it's not as ideal. And we did it with a, a leg, or actually you demonstrated something similar with the ball oh, behind yeah. the shoulder blades. The ball doesn't get them up quite as high, is what I find. So people who are having a really hard time finding that front line, that front 
across the belly are still, in my opinion, sometimes not getting it. Yeah. So it's, um, if you get a chance to try it on the arc, I would recommend doing that and see how that feels. Um, and then if we take that to the mat, right, it should be the same thing, but most people I find are not strong enough to do it well. And so what you end up with, instead of a nice up and a nice crisscross like I just saw Genevieve doing, right, you end up with this. Right, and it's this, this is like, what's his name? <laughs> Jane Fonda, or who's yeah. the other guy? Joe, what's his name? I don't remember who it was, that guy that was, not Joe, maybe the... Jack Lane. Jack Lane. <laughs> yeah, those guys, right? So we doing that, I feel no work. And in like two, two motions up here, I'm already working really hard here, whereas here... I could do this all day and not, I'm, I'm not connecting, right? There is no connection there. Yes, you can, right? <laughs> so that's what some of our students are doing instead of getting that diagonal to turn on, right? So it's really not working very well. Um, so that, that would be front, front side diagonal. Those would be my best recommendations. Do you, do you guys have anything to pipe in there or anything that you'd want to add there? No? No? Okay. Can't think of anything else. All right. So then if we go to backside diagonals, Kim was the one who mentioned these, the prone right uh, leg, ex opposite arm and leg. So prone would be um, full swimming, would be easy. You could even start working on uh, just the legs in, in that position. So I've also changed a lot how I teach the swimming and the swim prep and I'll show you and maybe you could try it and see what you think for you because I found that I connect better um, if I start out with my arms out in front of me and then here instead of just going to lift at first I do a, a longer sort of prep cycle and I'm having people pull their shoulder blades down and slide into this uh, kind of very low swan type thing, but the whole time I'm pulling forward, I really, it's almost like I could, I'm about to slide myself forward. I've got my shoulder blades shrugging down, the back of my neck is long, and I really feel active now in my lat area. So here I'm pulling, and then if I were to lift my right leg, I would pull this left arm really into the socket and float the right leg up. So now I'm feeling work in this side here, and I'm feeling the work across into my buttock and that leg there, yeah? So then I could switch sides with that same shoulder shrug and pull and lift up the opposite leg. So I really feel then the activity on the right side in the upper and the left glute leg um, tummy on this right side. So that really helps me find the diagonal across the back with the activity underneath. So then from there, you can progress to that same pull, push, and um, opposite arm and leg lifting up, and then switching sides. So I'm using that pull and pressure down to help find that lift. And then from there, when you go to full swimming, the shoulder, I find I'm really active here now. If I go to full swimming, I'm not kind of down in here. I'm really active and up here because I've just uh, activated all those muscles. Um, and then remembering again, right, the lats are the diagonal. So if I can connect this way, I'm also connecting other things, not just the lats, but I am connecting through that lat and that is a diagonal line. So it will really help if those lats are on and connected to get that diagonal across to the full swimming. Yeah. So then, did you say you pull? So it's almost like I usually actually take enough time to start with the head down, and then shrug the shoulder blades down first, and then reach forward and shrug. So the feeling is that that shrugging is happening first, 
And then I slide the arms in underneath and I've been called it, calling it a baby sphinx pose because I don't know, it makes me think of a baby sphinx because my head is up a little bit, but not so much right that my neck is back. And then I'm pulling downward here. So I've got a lot of activity. So I'm, I use sometimes these bigger mats, I use the edge of the mat to hook the base of my hand and I can really pull and feel that. Yeah. And then you should feel a lot of activity just under here in the side body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not, no, it doesn't go that low. It's really in that upper, uh, right underneath here, the trunk, thoracic region. Yeah. And then connecting that to the opposite leg and lifting the opposite arm. Yes, there it is. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard, it's hard for someone like me to connect, to stay connected in here. Yes, it's, it's work. Because as I come, I'm pulling more. Yeah? So I'm pulling more, and then I can lift. Right? So you could potentially stay on that one side and then switch. Yeah. And then grow the head long as you're going. Yeah, so it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of work. But it's really good work. I like it. It feels good and it feels like you're really connected. At least for the us loosey goosey types. Uh, <laughs> and so um so the easier version is on all fours, in fact. So I find that pointed dog is a lot easier than full swimming. Full swimming is a very hard exercise, I think. So you should really, you know, keep that in mind while you're teaching it. But, and pointed dog is not easy either if you're doing it well, right? And we've I sort of beat it up in all our classes, but it's that same idea, right? Pressing, lifting, holding, leg out. And I like to put that leg out, tuck the toes under, set them up so their pelvis is level then take that opposite arm and then I can take that leg and keep that level pelvis, right? And then we could do the up downs, you could do the in out. But if you were coming in, then you're activating obliques and then reaching away again. So you're getting um, the front side and the back side both working. So that could be really a change. And I do cue when I bring the knee, if I bend the knee in towards the upper body, I do cue the belly up a lot so that we do get those abs firing. So I ask them to bring the, I ask them to bring their belly up and bring that knee right up towards their chin and then out and in and finding that length out again so that they're really getting actually both diagonals, front side and back side on that one. Yeah, and then I've also been doing it in a hover so the knees hovering off the floor, right? So hovering and sliding and sliding and sliding, right? So those are other ways to challenge them um, with the diagonal. Yeah, good keeping that pelvis really still and level. Your toes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to have a slippery enough surface. Yeah. But, uh, or shooting the leg out. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. yeah. So I think those are probably the most simple diagonals. The other diagonal that, do you guys have anything to add there? Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. No? Okay, the other one that I really love, and, you'll, and I've put it in some of my classes, um, as a stretch, which I think is over the heads of many of our clients, but I do it anyway because it's, I like it so much, uh, is the side star. Yeah, so it's side plank, but you can modify down, right? So we can do uh, kneeling, and I tell them to come to kneeling uh, when I wanna peel it back a bit, hand out to the side, leg out to the side, and then hinge over and find that side position. Then we have holding there, keeping that hip underneath, right? trying to go front. And I don't worry too much about the front, but really more that back. So stretching that line back. This is a beautiful diagonal. This one feels like it gives me a lot of really lengthening through the body. 
and then I'm coming forward and reaching back. So just creating that nice long front line of the body. And then my favorite part is actually taking the leg behind and I do it, you can do it on a bent leg, you can do it on a straight leg and then reaching over to open stretch. So that would be if you were kneeling, if you were actually in side, right? You can take that leg back, oops, stepping on my sweater, and then really open up to the sky. That's one of my favorite stretches, but it's a little bit over the head of many people. So the kneeling one they're getting, they're starting to do the kneeling one. Yeah, and when that leg goes to the back, Allegra makes sure that knee does not flex, right? So the energy has to stay, I feel like, out the back in order for the body to really feel that, that stretch happen, right? So there, and I'm really stretching long, long, long leg to not letting my knee get floppy at all. Arms, yeah, finding that reach in opposition, right? So reaching there, yeah. And then, and then the extended version, right, is that advanced, which I am making them work on. Front, whoa, and back, front, and back, right, and then opening. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious about that one because until you get into the, the kind of twisting back stretch, um, it seems to me more like that's, I'm, I guess I'm not seeing the diagonal in that one. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. just side star. No one-sided yeah. body. I yeah. feel like it takes all that cross connection to hold. And maybe it's more stabilizing thing, especially as you get to one leg. So anytime I feel like I'm on one, I've got, and there's any movement here, that's that diagonal here. So I have to work that diagonal, this one, to stabilize that leg going back. So I don't feel it so much forward because then, although it, it, I could argue the same thing on the back body, but here, the further I stretch, the more work I'm doing to keep this connection across. So the further I stretch that, the harder that gets to do. It's not as pure like it would be, it's not just pure oppositional, because um, same side is moving, you're right. But the stability of it is a lot of cross work. Anytime you're on your side. Mm -hmm. So side, you could argue the same for side lying series, is actually more diagonal. Of this one, right? it together, yeah, but anything you do there. So because you're on the side, but you could do side kick. I don't know if you guys can see Kim, but she's doing side kick. Um, yeah, that's the, it's the front back motion that's going to make you stabilize through those diagonals. Without that stability across, you're going to fall over on the side. So that's where it comes from. So I think the progression would be side lying, then side modified side planking, then full star or side plank. Yeah, yeah, but that's a good, good um, question, good comment. Yeah. Um, the other place that you see some of that work is the control front, right? Which is this one in plank, right? So point, flex, point, right? Point, flex, point, right? So we're, uh, again, working that leg lifting up. This takes a lot more work in that back line and the front line to stabilize than it is if you're on two feet. So there is, that's control back. Yeah, yeah, that, that is, um, I think, I don't know. I don't feel it as much in this one, I feel, but it is because you're going um, up and down and up and down, right? So it's lifting, that part's not so diagonal, but as soon as one leg lifts up, there's a lot of diagonal stabilization happening so you don't hip dip, right? So your bottom doesn't fall on one side. So you could, single leg bridging would fall in that category too. 
So, yeah. Nice, Allegra. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think those are the main things that I work on with them, with the diagonals most often, especially when I'm just talking about diagonals. The, um, do you guys have any more questions, comments? Well, I was just trying to think of something that's standing. Yes. With yes. The mat, with the mat. I tend to do more, I do a lot of standing, but it's like both sides here, not as much up. Okay, so there's a lot, yeah, yeah. in standing. Shall we go there? Okay, so I, I think it's easier to find the diagonals in standing with a the TheraBand, so I tend, to, I tend to hit the TheraBand at this point when I get there. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so here we have a whole bunch of things. What's interesting is, um, okay, if we want to stay on that lower body, almost anything in a lunge or a single leg is going to get you into those diagonals, right? So one of my favorites, I actually did it this morning, but it was about stabilizers because I was talking about glute medius, but it's um, to do our lap pull and our lap pull arabesque, right? So really the, the opposite arm leg, this would be the true diagonal. Um, or if that's too much, I just start them here with that. And then I also do this a lot, the seesaw, I go out and back. So granted, I'm working stabilizing leg, but there's a lot of work to keep that pelvis from tilting open, right? I need to keep the work happening, the squeeze through the center line as I go um, up and down. It's hard to do while you're talking. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, so I, anything that you do that's on one leg um, is, so the true diagonal, oops, sorry, would be this, right? Or I guess you could do the seesaw with the one arm out, or but I tend to do both arms just to create more stability since it's quite a challenging thing to do anyway, right, for that. Um, if we wanted to just work on kind of opposite right. arm. On that one, are you, is the arms coming in front of you or just to the sides when you go? Down? On the seesaw, seesaw arabesque, I tend to go sideways. I tend to go just out to the side. But if you wanted a pure, like a more pure diagonal, if it's my left leg back, I would take my arm, right arm forward, okay. diagonally forward. Right, so that could be another variation on that. Um, then, oh, so where I was going with this is, if you wanted more just that upper, uh, there's so many things I'm, that are just coming in my head all at once, but you can, <laughs> you can do kind of this diagonal arm reach standing on this leg, right? So opposite a cross body lead, right? That would be kind of just working on this diagonal, but then you could also make it more interesting by putting them in that arabesque or putting them in something else that makes them go. Right, the other th one that I do that's less, um, okay, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. So those, those, are, those are there. The other ones that are super familiar that we could use, oops, from Pilates repertoire is like lunging front punching, for example. That is diagonal, especially, okay, for many reasons. One, because I'm in that lunge, and the other because I'm punching the opposite, so holding my trunk steady while I have a, uh, one arm with some force going across. So here I'm having to stabilize back this way. Here I'm having to stabilize back this way. Otherwise my trunk would go with my arms, right? So holding that trunk steady as you punch um, is also activating those diagonal lines through the, through the middle, right? So that would be another way or another easy way to sort of activate those diagonals. Uh, the, the more, Complex things start to be similar to what 
So I stole this a little bit from the chair and I was having people take the band in one foot, um, hold in the opposite hand at their side and then tap the foot down. Now this is pretty linear. This is just a very small diagonal to that. But then I change it and have them go, I call it a loose fourth position. And then they're going out to the side and closing in, right? So out to the side, closing in as they go. And then having them go sweeping out and in. So that incorporates this diagonal and brings them into the inner thighs and into the middle body that way. So this is one of the others that I've been using there um, for, for in standing. But you could, you know, you could think of anything that's oppositional. So any lunging position, any arm op oppositional motion, um, you could do fun things like try and have them, you know, pulling away from here if you wanted to get really creative with them. But all that is opening and co closing across the body. All of that will really work to help with stability and gait and balance across. So you'd pull the arm away as the leg goes down and then together. There you go. Yeah, maybe a lighter band for that would be good. Yeah. So the only other thing I would really encourage when you're talking about diagonals is, is um, the inner thighs in standing are pretty key, I find. So did you just toss me the ball? Yeah. Thank you. So I have them do this ball way up high in the inner thighs. And then this is where we start talking about spirals and not just diagonals for me. Because if you just squeeze it in, it's one thing and my knees go in and my feet start to flatten. So instead of cueing it that way, I tend to cue it as that spiral through. So almost dragging the heels together, but not actually moving them. And then letting that wrap around and then squeeze the ball at the top. And then I get this amazing squeeze, but my knees haven't turned in and my feet have not flattened. In fact, my arches have picked up. So it's like this spiral. So the idea there then is, I've, and I've done this with a few people, is a um, few times in class and people get so confused. So I don't do it that often <laughs> because they don't know, have a clue how to wrap the band and no one gets it right. So I tell them, put the band on the floor and let it, uh, the tail end be out to the side. So the, the side of the tail end, so for me it's on the left, I'm gonna put my arch of my foot there on the band, take it and wrap it around the lower leg, around, I think we've done this once too, around the thigh, around my glute right here and to the other side. So if I then, and I like to pull it up in my arch, that's one of my weakest areas is my foot, so maybe that's why I like that, but I like to pull it up and feel it pretty snug down there. So it's helping me pick up that arch. And then I can pull that rotation and I end up with this beautiful spiral and a lot of stability on that leg. So that's that spiral. These are all trying to follow sort of a diagonal pattern through finishing with sartorius and glute medius, which actually have pretty diagonal fibers. Glute medius a little less, but they're not straight up and down for sure. Holding there, um, to create that stability. So that's the same feeling. And then you could work on, you know, pressing away and coming in if you're really into working more that diagonal, even pulling back into that band as you pull it away, holding that stability there, or taking that same feeling with your ball and then trying to recreate that wrapped feeling when you squeeze in. So that to me is the all those muscles coming into that diagonal. Yeah, and then squeezing. So it's such a different squeeze than if I was just to squeeze directly inward. Yeah. That's what I have for you. Yes, they all left us. They all ditched us. It's just me left. As soon as I start to squeeze, I immediately feel that. I don't even really have to think about it. 
Yeah, not every watch people's feet. Not everybody goes there. Most people actually go here, right? They just go in. They don't go around and in and up. Someone trained you well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Dan, balance. Standing, my glute medius is working. Yes. Thank goodness for that. We've got some glute medius activation happening. That's good news. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So do you guys have anything else to add? Um, not really. I don't think except I like, I guess in my mind when I'm thinking of diagonals, I don't know if it's just because of like the idea of a diagonal usually being long, but I, I, there's this, I, I don't know if it's just me, but I get this like, there's the pulling together on the diagonal, but there's also the stretching long of the diagonal. Yeah. Which I feel like is very much wrapped into this, the whole idea of all these exercises because there's, you know, with dead bug, for instance, you're, you're pulling together on the diagonal and yet the extensions of that diagonal are reaching away. Um, and so, I don't know, like, I feel like, it, the diagonals can get so much more complicated <laughs> like if you start pulling that into it and it, while you're trying to teach it um yeah. and so yeah I, I guess i always kind of wonder about that like are this stabilizing is more the i guess usually what we're after but also trying not to shorten through the diagonal at the same time so keeping it relatively long Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I don't know. That was just a thought that kept coming to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, I find that it's actually much harder to stabilize on a long diagonal than mm -hmm. it is on a short diagonal. And so I'm not often telling people that that's what they have to do. I want to, I'm trying, I think in my head, I try and put them in a place where they actually feel the work in that diagonal. So, oh, the other ones that we didn't, in, we didn't talk about are these, all the twisting ones, mm. right? So we have all those rotational ones, too, that um, can get to the diagonal. And the, even the saw, like, that's one of the places where that actually is what we're working on. Um, I used that last week in the super strong class mm. to demonstrate that. But um, if you can get them to feel the diagonal as it's contracting in concentric, then the, this you can imagine this as the eccentric version. So it's a lot harder to stay controlled on a long diagonal than it is on a short diagonal. Right. But if you, I find that if I can get them to feel the short diagonal, then they can start to understand what that long diagonal is and find stability. And what's nice about the dead bug on the roller is if they're not, they fall off, right? So they don't know that that's what they're doing, and I don't really tell them exactly all the time but that is what it what the value of it is and so i i just start progressing them along to from bent leg to straight leg so increasing the length of the diagonal and the lever is what what i'm actually doing but i'm not really telling them that because you're right it becomes so complex and they don't need to know all that all they need to do is be able to walk without losing their balance right or or run without losing their balance right? that, that's where they are going to see it but when we really think about what, what it is we're doing and why we're doing it, that's, those are all the pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was also trying to figure out how we could, like the, I think it's one that you give to um, Georgia a lot, the like squeezing in on one side and finding the glute meat on the other side. With the, do you know what I'm talking about? On the springboard or? Um, yeah. Normally it's with the bar and it's like kind of pulling down. And, and then they pull down the one side and then the leg up. Yeah. I can't remember which side it is, if it's a diagonal one or not. It's, it is because this is pulling down going up. So it's finding these again. Right. 
it's lat here and abductor there. Yeah. But there's that other feature of abductor here for stability. Right. Yeah. Now, there's so many, and, and we can start talking about diagonals in the leg and the ligaments, and the, we could go to town on diagonals. But I think a good place is to start with like the trunk, really thinking about the trunk and then the lines you can make from there based on the trunk and then start working into those nitty gritties. Mm. But we do so much of it. Um, and I like footwork is really stabilizing all the diagonals when you're turned out parallel. That's why some people do the turn in is really trying to get all the diagonal fibers as well, not just those vertical fibers all the time of, you know, regular parallel squatting. Right. Which is the beauty of the variations in footwork. Yeah. So kind of great that now that we've been doing this for a while, at least I'm speaking for myself, I, I'm getting getting a better understanding of why the exercises are the way they are mm -hmm. versus, well, let's just do footwork so we can move our legs in three different directions. And, yeah. You know, just the, the, the finer details, I guess, that you just don't don't get when you're learning the like you said, when we're learning the repertoire. Learn your repertoire, figure out why we're doing it later, add variations later. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Yeah, so just to learn the repertoire deeply enough that you then start to see those nuances or right. the why, the like the deeper why, or what else can I get from this exercise or how, and that's actually, you know, why I started teaching with little themes every week is because then I can focus on one thing and I start finding these little things in, in the exercises. So like when I set up for this week is stabilizers of the body for me. And we can do that next week if you guys want in, in our group. But the reason that I wanted to do that is because I was just starting to realize how many stabilizers there are in the body. So, and what we use them for. So really when I first thought about the class, it was glute med and, and the connection between glute med and serratus anterior and how serratus anterior is the glute med of the shoulder and glute med is the serratus anterior of the hip. So um, I, you know, thinking about con that connection, I was like, oh my gosh, glute med and serratus are doing the same job. Hmm. Scapular stabilizer for the shoulder, uh, hip stabilizer for the glute and that whole lower quadrant, like they're doing the same job. So that's kind of how the stabilizer idea came but then when I started teaching the classes this week I was like oh my gosh but I have my deep abdominals and I have my adductors and I have like all these other stabilizers that I use and so it's been really like a fun journey to think through it that way mm -hmm. and that's why I diagonals and that's why like so that's why I keep theming my week because then it gives me that focus and I can pull that theme in and really for myself I think teach better about that instead of trying to teach everything at once because it's really gets complicated when I have to try and teach all, like you said, it gets to be too much. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe one theme could be spirals and you just talk about all the different spirals. That's a, that's a harder concept, but you know, you could, you could incorporate inner thighs could connect to your spiral, that spiral of the leg. You could do the footwork. You could do, um, you know, all kinds of different footworks in standing or on the, roller and that could be a great theme too so that's sort of why I pivoted my teaching that way and I did that years ago um, with my mat springboard class I had an advanced mat springboard class and I would say okay today's glute day everything glutes and uh, today's ab day or that's how we came up with the t-shirt pain in the abs because <laughs> 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 of that series that I was doing then so you know it's something to think about and even if you don't tell your clients what your focus is having a focus will help you really be able to just to put to put some of the things aside and be okay with less than perfect in some things if you're getting perfect in the one idea that you want to get so yes well thank you guys so much for being here yeah, yeah. little fun powwow this hour always goes by so incredibly fast for me yeah Fun. I'm sorry, I was uh, not, I was present. I just wasn't visible for the first part because I was chowing down. And I, I, I had a feeling you were eating. <laughs> I was pretty sure that that's what was happening in the background right. there. <laughs> but I'll just scare everybody. <laughs>
<laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> it's all right. I'm happy that you may make the time, really. So, all right. I will see you next week, Jen, and I'll see you soon, too. I'll see you now. I'll see you, yes. <laughs> Bye. Oh, thank you. I have to put the AC on the sand coming in. Okay. Because, um, you know, she has trouble. I know. And what, just look, what I've been doing with her is just, I've been repeating 